where Steve is continuing our team coverage and has been speaking with victims there. Steve? Yeah, yeah. In fact, Grace, we were right here along the road yesterday when the man in the truck stopped to ask us a couple of questions about the placard system, which has now been scrapped. But I asked him if he wanted to talk. He pulled over and we had a chat. Here he is. How anxious are you to get back into Lahaina? Bah. I guess I just like go help, eh? you know. I'm from Oahu, but I've been here 10 years with my family. My wife's family is from born and raised Lahaina. Okay, everybody I know since I've been here for a decade. I just like go home to my nephews and to all the family that helped me. I like help them, man. What was it like that day uh, when you were driving out? Maybe even the whole thing when it started to escalate? Well, we went, the winds was blowing our cars, my kids. I get four daughters. And they were scared already, so imagine if we were stuck in there yeah, with my kids. But it was windy, we were stuck right by um, Lahaina Gateway, by Safeway. And trees and the lions, was, we thought that the lions was gonna break and come out to our cars and stuff. With our kids, we was ready for ditch our cars, but good thing that we went out early, early enough to grab supplies and then got stuck at Maalaya for six hours. Do you know yet what you've lost? Um, me, I just, my house is okay, but my sister-in-law's house was burned down. They live in Kahoma. Um, my friend them's house, they, all, they live in Lahaina Luna Road. It's all gone. At least 20 plus friends I know, all gone already. Everything. So trying to get home to them, to help them, man, you know, any way I can. Because I feel bad because my house is still there, you know. So, get people that no more house, they stay at my house right now. Well, we're not there. That is Ladley. He is a Lahaina resident. Now, earlier, we used the word guilt, and, and I don't think that's the right word. Maybe it's a, the, the sense of responsibility, but you, you hear that a lot with these Lahaina residents that have been displaced and, and talking about what they want to do, knowing that other people have lost lives, they've lost more property. And, and, and it seems to see, that's why we see so many community uh, groups coming together. We, we see so many donations being made. It's the people of Maui, it's the people of Hawaii saying that they can't just stand by and watch. Grace? Steve, with families losing so much, are you surprised to see so many of them who still have a sense of hope? Yeah, right. I, I, and we talked to that other gentleman, Bruce, who is almost sure, based off of helicopter video that he's seen of the area, that his house is completely wiped out. And, and there's, there's hope in a couple of senses, right? Some people, they haven't had confirmation, so perhaps they go back in and there's a, 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 a pleasant surprise that they still have a house standing. But there's also hope in knowing, hey, things could have been worse, which is easy for us to say, right? It's, it's that much more impactful when somebody who's already lost so much is saying it, uh, knowing that they still have their lives, they still have their family, and knowing, again, there are others that are worse off that, that are dealing with that kind of grief, and knowing that because of where they are emotionally, they have a responsibility, in a sense, to go and help others that need it. Yeah, we appreciate them sharing their stories. All right, Steve, we'll check oh, yeah. back in with you in just a little bit. Thank you.